I've been asked a few times why, when solid-state relays are used with LED lamps, they sometimes flash or glow even when they're supposed to be off. So to explain that, I've got this generic eBay Fotec solid-state relay. I don't know if it actually is a Fotec one or, or a clone. Um, and I'm using this one because, A, it's got this nice plastic cover over the terminals, and also it's got the DIN rail mounting mechanism in the back. It's really quite nice, the stuff you can get off eBay. Unlike this, this is a hideous abomination. It's a green cased LED lamp screwed into a pink silicon uh, lamp holder, which I thought was quite amusing. So I thought if I'm going to use a Edison screw holder instead of the bayonet cap one and the adapter, I might as well go for something lurid. So I got that. So let's uh, test this, shall we? So I've got the main supply coming in. The neutral is looping straight out to the lamp and the live is going into the solid state relay, switching through the solid state relay to the lamp's flex. So let's plug that in right now. And after a short delay, this lamp will just suddenly start glowing. And the reason for the short delay is because it's got a smoothing capacitor in it and the solid state relay is just leaking a very small amount of current. And if I then power the solid state relay with a, a 12 volt supply, actually a 9 volt supply here, um, the lamp lights at full brightness as normal, but just doesn't quite go out. And if I use a, a different LED lamp, a very low power one, this one just lights instantly, there's no delay, and it's the one that's not got the smoothing, hence the slight flickeriness, and it's actually surprisingly bright, uh, just on that leakage. But when you put in one of these more expensive, this is an Asda lamp, Asda branded anyway, and it's uh, quite a high power one that's got a switching power supply in it. It gets really annoying, because it starts flashing on and off. It'll still work when I uh, power it up properly by turning the solid state relay on, but as soon as I turn it off, it will start that flashing again. So to explain what's happening, let's do some doodles. I'll unplug this at the moment, so I don't manage to poke anything into those terminals. So inside the solid state relays, you've got the two AC terminals, AC in and AC out, the sort of switch terminals, and there's a triac, plus the drive circuitry for the triac, and across that is a device called a snubber network. So that's a resistor in series with a capacitor. And two common values for generic snubber networks are 100 ohm, 100, or 100 ohm and 100 nanofarad. These are just, you know, it varies depending on the application, but this is just a very common generic snubber network. And the point of the snubber network is to reduce the risk of uh, any sharp transients accidentally turning the triac on. You can find, uh, without it, with inductive load, you could find that the triac behaves. It actually turns on and off. can be quite erratic. It, it doesn't work properly. And uh, so they put this, it's, it's really common. If you look in dimmer racks, you'll see they've got the these snubber networks as well. And your household dimmer has, has a, a snubber network in it, which, if it's this traditional triac one, which also causes that problem with the, the lamps. And what actually happens here is that if you consider that the standard LED lamp has the typical capacitive dropper with a resistor across it, he said, drawing a very bad resistor, then the bridge rectifier, super sloppy, uh, and then just, let's say, LEDs, and an inertial emitting resistor. Might as well do the whole job. Oh God, that's a terrible resistor. I really, maybe I should slow down. Should I slow down a bit? Should I start this video again? No, I'm just going to leave my shitty drawing for all to see. Anyway, you get the gist. So, um, what actually happens is that this capacitor here is leaking enough current, just like a capacitive dropper, it's leaking current through. And this wouldn't normally be an issue with traditional tungsten lamps or other high loads because the, you know, the tungsten filament of a filament lamp will pass a small amount of current. It'll, that current will flow through it, but it's not enough to actually make it start glowing. So you don't notice it. Uh, it still means you could get a shock if you poked your finger in the socket, but don't do that. Um, the, so the capacitor leaks a bit of current and that's enough in these ones to actually make the LEDs glow. The flashing one... What's actually happening is in the lamp that's flashing, you've got the um, supply going in through a bridge rectifier 
because it's got the electronic driver circuitry. That then charges a capacitor. And then that then powers the driver circuitry, and I'll just write driver rather than start drawing lots of driver circuitry. And what actually happens here is that when you you're, the leakage current starts charging this capacitor up, and the driver will start it will kick in once it reaches a threshold voltage. So the the capacitor slowly charges up until it reaches that, and it's sort of if you saw the voltage in that capacitor, it'd be a sort of ramp up. And then as soon as it reaches the threshold voltage, the lamp tries to start, but because there's no actual main sort of significant current supply, the voltage across the capacitor then drops down and the lamp goes out again. Then it starts rising again, then it drops down with a flash and it just keeps repeating that and that's why it keeps flicking. So how can you actually stop this from happening? Um, in the case of uh, theatre dimmers, they used to use just an extra load, a ghost load. They used to just stick a tungsten lamp across the output of the dimmer. It was the only way to run some small special effects. Um, what immediately comes to mind is the one of the rides at uh, Disney Paris called Armageddon had loads of low power um, effects lighting all around the set and they had a problem. They powered it up when they were all ready to go and the dimmers were leaking enough current to actually make these lights glow when they were supposed to be off and that ride attraction requires absolute blackout for its, for its horrors that unfold to the audience in it. So, as a quick fix, it wasn't ideal, as a quick fix they had the dimmer cabinet on the wall and all these lamp holders hanging out with tongues and lamps and big clumps, which wasn't really a great idea, just having all these lamps just clumped together. Now, the Strand dimmer racks, they have a facility, I'm not sure about the modern ones, but the older ones had the facility to remove, cut a link and it would disable the snubber network for specific channels. But it was a sort of one-way trip unless you had to, unless you sold that link together again. But with these, all I can really suggest is that you, if you really have to run a, such a low load, then you could use a, you know, you could use a high-value resistor, but that's going to get hot. Or you could use another snubber network and actually wire it across the load, because then, if you've got the uh, leakage coming through this, and let's say. Um, Let's say that's live going in, and you get neutral, and you get your LED lamp. Let's just draw it as a circle with an LED in it. I don't know if there's a symbol for an LED lamp as such. Uh, what you could do if that was leaking through, you could add another snubber network capacitor and resistor across that, and that might actually lower the... It would act almost like a potential divider with the snubber network in here and across the lamp, and it would hopefully bring the voltage below the point that the LEDs uh, conducted. But um, it's all a bit of a bodge, really. It's just the fact that LED lamps are just so incredibly sensitive that this is a known problem. And it, it even used to be a problem with some compact fluorescent lamps that would uh, also try to kick-start every so often. And um, in some of these instances, they did, they did use resistors inside just to try and at least leak some of that current away, but um, it's not so easy with the dimmers and the, the solid-state relays because these components are actually quite beefy to actually perform their filtering function. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky one, but that's, that's why it happens. Uh, it's not a fault with the unit. It's just that any dimmer or solid-state relay is going to have that circuitry, and some lamps, particularly the very low-power LED ones, are just going to have that slight issue that they flicker and flash. Um, so yeah, it's that's why it happens, and uh, and possibly a suggested way that you might be able to fix it. Another option, if you have a lot of lamps and a ceiling run off a dimmer and you put in loads of LED lamps and they have this flicking problem, sometimes it helps just to, in, in that circuit, just put one tungsten lamp in one position and it then sta you know it acts as a shunt that brings the voltage down, it shunts that leakage and stops that problem happening. But yeah, it's an interesting thing. It's, it's quite uh, it's surprising how often this happens, but, uh, but now you know why it happens.